voting and we're down to tabletop. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, I have to bring my son to the dentist today. Though. There's no agenda. Oh, okay. no. no, it's not loading anyway. I, I'm trying to load, but it won't. I think this is our meeting and budget hearings on finance committee. John, you need the sheets, sir. Is this our budget? Maybe you can tell. Plus Extra night. Two versions. Uh, yours is the uh, with my cover letter. Cover letter. It's working on the book. Yeah. Oh, this is whose <coughs> version is this? That's for ours. Red this. Red this. What is the big thing? That's we were having some problems, so she pulled together some numbers. Use the small one for now. Okay. I'll put that aside. Okay. Where's Reggie? I don't know where she was. She was just here circulating. I don't know where she went. Okay. Go ahead, John. Okay. Let's start off with the cover. As the cover letter says, and as we look at the cover letter, like, you know, can't hear John, you. John, anyone is still here with yeah, us? Yeah, we can't hear you. So people at home can hear your voice. Project. Where is that? Yeah. Okay. There's four chairs over there. How many? Four chairs over there. <laughs> Maybe the easiest thing to is to start with the free cash, which is everybody's first question. Is this on? For me, it's on. You're not going to have to So it's, it's on? Okay. Everybody thinks that's a place to start. Let's start with free cash to know what we got. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's start with the free cash, which is on the back of the uh, memo. It says projection of free cash. 626? 626 and 67. You're going to see in here that it is scaled way back. I think it's right there. The uh, to only certain items. One is the HRHS shortfall operating budget from last year, 92. Actuarial, the OPEB, OPEB account. Uh, what is that, John? Uh, yeah. John, that's, yeah. that's for the. John, can you explain the OPEB? Was this in last year's um, management letter from? It was in the 2010 management letter. Oh. Last year. Yes. Well, while we're talking about that, I should report to this board that I got a call from the auditors who did the annual audit for up here and requested a private meeting with myself and town administrator and town council. Um, they have found some things and they are recommending we do a further audit to the tune of about two to, th Reg, was it two to five thousand dollars, the auditor? About three to four. Three to four. Additional funds that need to be expended to follow down some things that they have have questions on. Okay. Did they give you clues or anything? Or? Yes. You don't want to talk about it now? Um, That's fine. Yeah. It, it's some things they need to chase down. Okay. Um, town council was there. It was everybody's general opinion that we should not ignore the situation and that we should do the audit as required. That was the state auditor, DOR? No, it's our town auditors, their names. Why is it any? Hmm? Why is it any 
only it's an idea. No, that's it. Thank you. Okay, um, so we got to put three to five in. It sounds like so we have to put. I, five that meeting was on Friday. I just found that out. Okay. Um, and before we do anything, this board should take a vote on that issue, whether or not we go can forward with. Can you expand on that or, or expound on it? Or they, or they were finishing up their audit here, and rumors circulated to them about question marks um, of possible irregularities. I guess is the best way to put it. Um, they had questions for myself and Reggie and town council. Based on our responses, they thought it was best to go forward with a more in-depth audit of, of that issue. Um, so it's all be like five grand then? It's no more than. Well, is there something we can talk about in executive session? Is it? Impending litigation, or well, the, the the department could be discussed, I suppose, because of pending litigation on it. But the vote to further the audit needs to be taken now, so that they can get going. Um, well, I'll, I'll make a motion to go move that forward, just to move this along, to 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 actually fund that to five thousand dollars, if we could. Up to five. Right. Up to five thousand dollars. Second. All in favor? Any further discussion? And we'll we'll hear a little more in executive at some point. Okay. Time. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry to, to do that right then. No, that's no, okay. Yeah, Mike, it's just, well, we're spending free cash. So that OPED audit is now account? No, that's that's a separate, that's a separate audit, audit, but there should be a number added for further Melanson and Chief audit. Okay, so back to projections of free cash? Yes, okay. please. Uh, Again, uh, Norris Roof Design Consultant 29150. We only left in there what we had to leave in there. And we backed into this because obviously when we come up, came up with the deficit, we had to find where we can get the money to fund the deficit. So we backed into free cash. As you can see, a lot of stuff was taken out. There's no repayment of the $112,000 that we voted at town meeting <coughs> last year because we approved $92,000 for HRHS, New Hampshire Regional. And there was another twelve thousand dollars, I think, uh, sixteen thousand dollars for miscellaneous things, almoners and all that. So remember at the town meeting, people said we want to take that money from stabilization fund. And I still want to put it back. I mean, it, what's the four nine four at the bottom? Well, that, that's fine, but you, we have a, a beginning deficit of a little over a million dollars. So we can go back and make cuts. We can we can do a lot of things, but. This is our version of the balanced budget. If uh, we want to cut departments, we can do that. But there's a couple of caveats in here. So we just took everything out. Because last year, I think the Finance Committee said, you know, we run a risk if you approve it from the next year's free cash, it may not be there. There was also $50,000 each for the uh, operating capitaliza uh, capital fund and for the, you know, Operating Stabilization Fund and the Capital Stabilization Fund, those were taken out. I believe the Operating Stabilization Fund stands at $9,000 now, and the Capital at roughly 112. So we saw 112 in the Capital? Yeah. Okay. And there's going to be, I know the chief, Chief's here, uh, his cruiser was taken off of this also, so he has the right to put a warrant article on to try to get that done too. Okay. So that would come from the Capital. So that can come out of capital at 112. It we could yeah. still fund a cruiser with the capital. Oh, yeah, we can, we can fund three and a half cruisers. No, we're out. Cruisers. no, we're out. no one cruiser and a bicycle. Well, a cruiser this year and other things as people need them. Okay. But, you know, our goal to replenish isn't, isn't happening. John, what was the um, um, estimate for the cruiser? 33, 35? Yeah, 33 to 35. That full ar fully armed, the lights, paint. Cruiser and equipment. What's a warranty on those things, by the way? Just three years. <clears throat> okay, so if you go, if you go over to the in committee budget recommendations, which the next page, page there is landscape. So it says fiscal 14 has a column department requested budget, which is what the requests were, which are a little over 15.1, and just put in here the percent of that particular department's budget to the total overall budget, just so we can get a, a, a 
eye on that. And as you go down there, you see local schools are roughly 32%, regional is 31%. That's 63% in the school. And, and that's not good or bad, it's just what it is. It is what it is, right? Yeah. So if you go over the next column, it'll say budget shortfall, which is roughly a million six. So we took the million six, put it to the, the fin, uh, committee recommendation. We took the shortfall to the uh, percent of the budget, which is if we divided this up equally right. as to how big everybody's piece of the pie was, this would be the actual cut under the budget shortfall. Yeah. So, so basically, if we took all the requests, uh, good point, and we said we're going to deduct across the board evenly on all departments, and to make this shortfall, each department would need to give up these amounts going down. And you can see the. The big numbers, the local school would be L325, the regional 307. Yeah. So the so library would be out 8,500. Yeah, but the, but the thing is, the reason we didn't use that formula is that the library, for instance, says we only need this small amount of funds. They did a, a nice job of holding back and saying, here's what we needed. They're a small budget. We, we couldn't see penalizing the library for that, you know, why why give them a percentage of the increases for the other departments? It, it would decimate some small departments. So there's a number of small departments we didn't feel should be touched. Uh, but I think the key is all the departments got an increase over 13, and our recommendations, put this in the, the positive spin that we've been using, we, were de we decreased the increases that the departments asked for. Decrease the increases. We decrease the increases. That okay. So, for instance, uh, Hampshire Regional asked for roughly six hundred thousand dollars. We decreased it by two hundred. So we didn't cut two hundred thousand dollars from their budget. We approved four hundred thousand dollars for to the yeah, budget over last over, year. Over last year. Yeah. So you so approved the four hundred thousand dollar budget increase. Mm -hmm. from the prior we just year. couldn't approve the six hundred thousand. We couldn't afford the six hundred. Right. Okay. Same thing with. Fire and police and highway. Those okay. are the four major departments that, that we had to deal with. So our recommendations are in the last column, the, the Fin Committee recommendations. And you can see, if you go down, uh, what we did. And there's some little notes to the side. Uh, you want to go individually on these things? Or you want to? Yeah, why don't we just, I mean, the, the police department. Let's start there, I guess. Where is here. Uh, police? Okay. Number 15. Yeah. So it's fifty thousand dollars less than what uh, Chief Sibinell requested. Right. So well, the, the final increase is six percent and twelve percent on wages and expenses. And again, the numbers are rounded, but and yeah. And what we didn't want to do is at first we were going line item by line item. We don't want to tell the department how to cut where to cut their budget. So we went to the major lines. Expenses is a major line. Wages is a you know if the chief wants to cut it in some other area, I think that's his job. You know, his responsibility. We don't want to tell him where to, to cut money. It doesn't make sense. Mike, do you want to feedback as we go, or do you want to just keep going? If you just go through. You go, let him go through it, because... Okay. Uh, dispatch, fire, same thing. Uh, on ambulance, for instance, it's 53000 but 38000 is for a new service that the chief was here. The chief recommended we have. It was the Saturday and Sunday coverage uh, full coverage on. I think it was between 9 and 5 or 9 and 6. So he was trying to provide the town with a new service. And it was just a great idea, but it was $38,000 we didn't have. So we just took that service out. And we, we talked to the chief on it. That <coughs> and that couldn't have come out of the ambulance fund, that 38000 to continue the, to develop that service, but could that funds come up from... Well, we have questions on the, the ambulance fund, though, okay. the way That's it's okay. written. Yeah, we, Sorry, we talked Sorry. about that, yeah. <coughs> Uh, for instance, a building inspector, you know, he, he's $64,000 budget. We, we didn't touch him. Uh, local schools, uh, the final increase was, f I believe, 4%, uh, and we reduced it by 100. I think they were looking for around 200, we reduced it by 100. Uh, regional schools, again, reduced by 200, but they got roughly 400 increase, 9%. Highway, you know, they go down. But the big numbers were, as you see, in the two schools, uh, the mm -hmm. fire and uh, police. So that came down to 502934. Uh, and you go down to the selectmen. Uh, we reduce you folks 
$8,900. And your budget encompasses a lot, you know, $380,000 roughly. We have a budget of three hundred eighty thousand dollars. Well, your budget encompasses that. <coughs> what you, you guys control certain line items. Yes, yeah, we get computers, legal, legal technology, technology okay. legal. You weren't here when we reviewed it. Does that include our stipends, though? Yeah, yeah, the big stipend. <laughs> um, Was he being facetious? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Me too. You're worth three times what you guys get. I <laughs> zero times zero. Yes. But that's not my, I didn't mean it that, that way, but yeah. Lots of rocks. You work hard. Uh, okay. So so we also had uh, the selectman reduction. So we came up with 511834. That's when we went back to the free cash saying, what do we need from free cash to balance it? Oh, 494 631. So that's what all of that is. Not but there's before you that there's a big caveat here in that there, there's a little bomb that could explode with the regional, as we all know. If four towns pass the budget, we have to take that two hundred thousand dollars and give it back. And that'll come out of our fund. The selectman fund basically. No, no, no the whole there's money. no money. There. Oh, it's budget no money. It, 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 it brings us into the same situation as we had last year. Only more, it's worse. Much worse. Yeah. And, and this, this is, I'm going to say this in. 100% worse. Uh, we, we have, we all love the schools, and, and don't take me wrong, but we have a, a regional school committee that I believe, is anybody on the regional school committee? Okay. I believe that's made up percentage wise, which we have 56% of the students this year. Our, our proportion is going up and the others are going down. Not because we're saying necessarily more kids, but they're losing more kids, the other towns. So our percentage goes up. So we have a 56% stake in it. But the, the school committee, I believe, is made up of 56% of Southampton residents. I think it's the same mix as we have uh, vested in the school. And, and they need to yeah, yeah. look at the whole town when they sit out and look at the regional's budget. They just can't look at the regional's budget because that gives them one side to the equation. It kind of kind of cripples us in town by voting we want $600,000 more. And we sat down with Cindy and uh, superintendent and all that, and we went over the changes, and they're all good changes. I mean, there's none of us said that service is, is you know, baloney. We don't need that. They were all good reasons that they wanted the increase. Same with the, the Norris School. So nobody came to us with reasoning that we said, you know, you're crazy. We don't, we don't want to do this. There was good, solid backing. Everybody uh, did a great job with their budget this year. Uh, you know, I mean, Chief Silvernail, he has a big budget. He came and he answered, he had all the questions answered. They were all down there. So, you know, we spent time with all the folks. So I, I can't tell you, I don't think any of us can tell you now, is, you know, go to this budget and wipe out fifty or $100,000 because it's not needed. Yeah. Well, the, the John, this whole, this whole scenario would work. Because, you know, I expect the, the department heads and school committees mm -hmm. to advocate mm -hmm. on what they want. That's right. The, the caveat with the regional is that even though we'll make recommendations for what's the best interest for the citizens in town 24-7, not just the school year in school, yeah. but 24-7, we, get, we get voted out by the other towns in the, in the regional but system. And that, that sort of undermines the whole process because we're ended up funding a lot of the services at the school I mean, line share basically, right? Fifty-six percent. Well, that's why I'm saying the the members of the regional school committee that are from Southampton need to be brought into this process and understand what their votes mean when they vote on the school committee's budget. It it, it could cripple the town. And over the years, we're seeing this go up and up and up, and it's going to just grab the town. You know, pretty soon, instead of the schools being sixty-three percent, sixty-five, seventy percent, at some point. We don't have enough money to fund departments and keep them operating. And again, it's, I'm not complaining about the regional. I just think we need to get the involvement with the school committee. There, must be some, there needs to be some fiscal responsibility. Yeah, but I, I also think we should meet. Yeah. We should meet with them as a select board. The finance committee have members on it because we have somebody that goes to the meetings and reports back. I don't know if you folks do. No, we don't. Well, we do. We serve yeah, the local schools, but not the yeah. regional. So I think it's important to for you folks to voice the overall picture of all this. Well, we kind of did last year at town meeting when we didn't vote the full. But that was that was too late because if we do it while they're, they're building their budget. I don't disagree with you then. You but, know, I think but that would be better. Are you comfortable wiping out free cash 
totally? No, absolutely not. So, but uh, the reason, you know, we're going to come back and I think we're going to find two hundred thousand dollars somewhere. The, the Say that again. I missed that. We're going to have to find two hundred thousand dollars somewhere if the regional. regional so, what's the likelihood of that happening? It's Who knows? Happening. I was what's talking. The probability. I was talking to Cindy Landers, yes. the business manager. <laughs> Right. And you were telling me something that you thought three towns were comfortable with it, and one was. We, well, we've gotten indications from three towns of what, what's been requested is going to be what's in the budget. The fourth town we haven't gotten an indication. Right. Yeah. We we've been going to meet with them to get that. Cindy, I've known you for a while, but you know how how it is. This we, we we always get sort of squished more and more every year. You know. I'm, I'm, you know, I can tell you right from my first hand, I'm a very much, you know, well off and um, benefit from a good school system no. based on what I do for a living and my education and stuff. But as a selectman, I try to see the whole balance of what we do here. And a child is taken care of 24 7 by our fire, police, ambulance services, and yet we keep cutting those. School years, 180 days, we're in school six hours a day. You can do the numbers. But this. The amount of money we're paying for each and every student, each, you know what I'm saying, per cost, per hour, is, is drowning this town. And I don't know what you think. I know you're leaving, but I don't know what you think we should be doing. That's me to hear your opinion. Okay. I hear something a lot. But I'm just saying, what do you think there's been? There's, you know, there's two points. One is, in 2012, 2013, we kept it at the bottom line was 2%. And we tried to keep the assessments low. We threw free cash at it. We threw school choice at it. We had spread those stimulus money we threw at the budget. This year, we don't have the resources. We don't have those. So what we've been doing is kicking it down the road. And this, this is the end of the road. The other point being, we're in competition. We're in competition with East Hampton. We're in competition with PDPA. We're in competition with Hilltown. We're in competition with all the school in Northampton. $652,000 of our budget goes out the door with the students. It goes to charter schools. It goes to school choice. Also, you're spending $547,000 on kids going out to Smith. Well, so, you know, that's, that's just in this town. Um, in the past, when we really cut the budget, and the last time was 2004, we started a stampede out of Hampshire Regional. So it's, that's when actually your vote numbers really went up, was back then we had more and more students leaving to go to Smith Book. So part of this is, I just want to if ask you want us, is. if you want us to, you know, mask the budget or really cut back, you're going to pay for it one way or another. It's either going to Hampshire Regional or it's going to Smith or it's going to School Choice. But well, uh, moving forward, because I, you know, you know, the only way to really sort of reset this town's budget is a prop two and a half override, and it's not going to happen. I mean, really, it's not going to happen. I mean, that's what you have to do because the expenses have gone past the new growth in two and a half percent that we can raise the, the, the budget. Uh, yeah, you know, and I'll tell you what, we had a similar situation here. I found out last week anything we put in the budget for an increase is probably going to go to pay for some out of district tuitions because we have some heavy duty tuitions coming up. So Cindy, are you yeah. saying that in 2004, when there was a, a large cutback in schools, that students walked with their feet because of a cutback yeah, in yeah. services? I mean, there was a, like a correlation? Two, two yes, two, two study halls a day. Um, you got up into your senior year and you didn't have any classes because, you know, um, ex, um, the extra classes were cut. I, mean, I can say that my son was going through that and he came home as a junior or something and says, Dad, I got three study halls this, uh, maybe a sophomore, this semester. He says, no, you don't. He says, I do. I says, well, if you do, you're going elsewhere. And luckily, the school only did it for a short period. They were able to read. Well, you, you can't give a kid three study halls. No, 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 no. Well, I, I think it is time for a two and a half over. I think the town needs to start thinking about this. We can't just keep squeezing the regional and north school what they're saying is we've got they've got a lot of pressures students are leaving with the funds they can't control that so we do need to make a push for two and a half i'm 
this is my last day here i think the town needs to really look at that other towns have been doing this we've been kind of skidding skirting around the issue for a long time if you don't have the money in schools you know students walk mm -hmm. because students lose services and classes that's what has to happen and with East Hampton open, it, it's going to be interesting to see if we lose a lot of students. But let's, I want to give everyone the select board on. Any okay. questions for them? I just have a question. If they did a two and a half override, how much of a difference would it make on your taxes per year, per, per, per resident? It would depend on what your percentage is. <laughs> you go full two and a half percent? Uh, I think Northampton just had. They didn't put it to vote yet, but it's it, the city council. And what were they saying um, on average? Average two hundred thirty-five dollars a year. Yeah. On, on what size budget though? They have a lot bigger budget. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But yeah, but it's not going to solve a two hundred thousand dollar uh, old ride. Is not going to solve a half a million or a million dollar deficit <coughs> right now. It'd be a band aid. And can, can I well, can I back up one other item? Uh, we were talking about the projection of free cash. Just want to make a note that we, we deducted the $50,000 for the study for the fire safety complex. We took or, it out. Yeah, we took it out entirely. And, and our thought was, if we spend the $50,000 and we come back and say, yeah, we can build it for $5 million. I have no idea what the numbers are. That's a debt exclusion that you got to go back to the town again and say, we're adding this on your base rate. And also, you have to look at it, Tom and not John, is that we have probably three quarters of a million dollars worth of equipment in a building that's that is not. Oh, I, I don't disagree. So you you could lose all your fire apparatus right. from that building. Let me let me go ahead. My biggest concern is has, has the regional got very dependent on school choice money? Well, we're. Like I said, $650,000 we're paying in kids going to the Frankfurt and we're taking in probably about $600,000. So it's basically, it's always been kind of a wash of kids showing up. What you're saying now is there's an, exit, there's an exit of students coming out and you got used to the school of choice money to run your programs and... Not run the programs, offset, uh, offset the tuition. So it's always been kind of a wash between okay. The kids going out and the kids coming in. Okay. Well, what about the federal dollars? Because it was a concern when the federal dollars came in for... We tried to judiciously... Because you, you used that for your budget money, and my concern at the time was now your budget has now gone out by those federal dollars that came in the TARP program and stuff like that. We're actually... We tried to judiciously use those. About 50% of them maybe funded some of the budget, which was one reason why your assessment didn't go up three years ago. Um, we tried to not use them for budget. We tried to use them for other for other things, but um, we did fund part of our budget here, and that's part of the reason. Another, you know, the biggest two hundred thousand of this increase is because basically we're on free cash, or we're down to two hundred thousand in free cash. Um, the amount you're cutting out. Is three hundred fifty-six thousand dollars of our budget, and it basically leaves us pretty much level funded with the previous year. But there was a four hundred thousand dollar increase from us. Isn't that what John said? Yeah, but there, there was a. And I'm talking bottom line. Yeah, bottom, bottom line. Budget. Yeah, some of it is just contractual obligations and yeah. all that. But yeah. yeah. But here's something that I. I'm, using, I'm sorry. They're using less free cash. <coughs> here's something that I'm sitting here trembling about because, looking at this budget, it, it's. In my years of experience on here, it's unacceptable from a town standpoint. I, I understand the effort that's gone into it. But the simple math of the whole deal is we can raise taxes 2.5%. And any department who's looking for more than a 2.5% increase is just not looking realistically at what's going on here or anywhere, um, schools included. And, and I appreciate what everybody's trying to do in the school choices, hopefully trying to motivate the schools to do a better job. Our local school, I think, has a net income. income as opposed to the high school, which had a net income and now has an, is in a wash or something like that. It's to motivate good work and good effort to get that extra money to come in. And, and frankly, I don't, I'm not in total agreement with the program because it punishes some of the poorer school districts who can least afford to send, pay out the money and re rewards us, for instance, on a local basis. It gives us extra money when maybe we don't need as much. But 
And that's not the only problem. The only, some of the unfunded mandates are special needs children who go out to outside programs that cost us thirty and forty thousand dollars a year for, for one child oh, wow. and going up. Mm -hmm. um, some, the unfunded mandates are, are I, I know the unfunded mandates that schools are dealing with. But a budget that doesn't put anything away for a rainy day, which doesn't make any allowances for anything else at this stage is unacceptable to me personally, and I, I appreciate all the work they've done. If I was to draw up, what I'd like to see is no more than a 2.5% increase. What we did with the union contracts as we negotiated them here, we gave no more than 2%, I don't think. On a rare occasion, maybe a third year got a little bit more, but our contracts in town stated under two, roughly two. I don't know what the schools gave out, but I know local gave out close. Because the simple math of this is any time a department gives out more than 2.5%, it's, it's got to come from somewhere. <coughs> to punish another department by paying more than 2.5%. An ideal budget, just I can draw it in my mind right now, is we replace $100,000 into each of the rainy day funds, we keep $50,000 in cash, free cash as a, an extra cushion, and the departments have to adjust to that kind of a rationale. As far as a 2.5% override, I'm not in favor of it. I couldn't support it. Back to the public safety complex, we were timing that to ex with other debt exclusions expiring, so hopefully the public will not see a net increase on their taxes. And my point would be that the departments have to get more efficient at doing their job with the same amount of money. But to, to look at this and use all the free cash, I, I, I got to say, I can't support it. Well, one thing we got to remember on this is that if the school regional is looking for $600,000 and it gets passed by four out of five towns, that depletes 100% of our free cash or some other $600,000. Right. And we have to plan on that. We have to make the hard choice that we're going to yeah. plan on that. Yeah. Well, the reality yeah. is it's never, it's never gone our way. If we, if we say right. we'll only fund this much, mm -hmm. we always have to come back <coughs> later on and use whatever funds are and make cuts across the board. Yeah because it always gets voted to go that way. Mm -hmm. So we, we should realistically be looking at this budget as that regional's going to get what they wanted. They're going to get they, the 600000 But they shouldn't get it the next time. They should know They're going to get it, though, and they'll get it the next time. But, because I mean, but they should be on notice that we're limited to a 2.5% increase, and they've got to keep you, it. You can't do that. I know, but they, we've we got four towns to vote for. are talking about us, our, our people voting, and, and we've got to do that. We've got to make it known that every time their budget goes up by X number, it comes out of somebody else's pocket. Well, we've, we've done that in the past years, and it's, well, we don't, we have no control over it, and, <coughs> and that's the hard part of that. Well, we do have control in the sense that we have com members on, on the committee, and it has to be people saying, well, everybody has programs that are necessary. People have to say, the hard, make the hard choice. Yes, it's a good program. Yes, I'd like to have it, but I can't afford it. But, Mike, we, they can't prevent that. They're voting on that committee. That that as and, I'm, and I appreciate Cindy and all the things that go on because I have contacts up there. But they have to make they have to make the hard choices also. Just like we have to sit here. If we give them that six hundred thousand dollars, we're going to have to make hard choices. Whether it's police officers, fire department on coverage on weekends, cruisers or whatever, it's got to come from somewhere. And if we don't fund it now, and knowing that it's there, we're going to be halfway down the year, and then we're going to do a massive cut to everybody that's going to be worse than if, if we plan for it now. Well, what I thought was to use this year as a stepping stone to give folks an increase and help them uh, level out the services. Because if you take the $600,000 roughly from the school, that wipes out $600,000 from other departments because you want to use the uh, reserve fund for replenishing stabilization. You can't, you can't have both. These, these folks here are just, you know, it's going to be slash and burn on these departments. You're going to, you're going to be, yeah, you know, laying off policemen, you know. The but what's going to happen six months down the road if, we, if they come through with the whole budget? We're going to lay off policemen anyways. This is going to pass. Regional budget's going to pass. Yeah. And Mark, in August, we are going to be running around cutting the budget. We've got a, 15, we got a $14 million budget for lack of a one, $15 million. What's 3% of $15 million? Forty-five, four, four fifty, four hundred fifty thousand. So realistic, we we have to cut two to three percent out of everybody's budget. To as as of the fiscal thirteen level, right? Everybody's got to cut two to three percent out, and everybody's going to have to. Chief's going to have to make adjustments to its budget. Chief's going to have to make. Ed's going to have to decide. <coughs> maybe whatever choice. Everything we have has a cause and effect. Whatever we decide to do is going to have some effect down the road. Yeah. Whether it's less hours in a cruiser. 
fewer EMTs on the call, and believe me, I don't want to wake up someday and have be them looking me in the face, or I'd like to have them looking me in the face if I need them. But that's the hard choices we're going to have to make. I mean, we're going to go back and look at regionalization of this service and that service, and this is going to push. But, but this is going to push us way back. I don't know how you get away from. from I like to hear from the departments because this is going to. I, I think that's me. I mean, we can do it. Don't but get I mean, me wrong. Three, but three percent, if if the chief had to. I'll pick on the police because we still have to find a cruiser for them. But if we picked on at three percent, could you juggle your budget around to to do three percent? What would you have to do off the top of your head, not holding well, it? Fiscal well, thirteen. The, the difficulty with the police department is that is wages make up the vast majority of the um, expenses, mm -hmm. and um, as you know, a lot of the uh, wage-related items are contractual. Uh, so we really don't have much choice or leeway to, to really make any uh, cuts in that area. Uh, based upon, you know, what the finance committee has proposed, you know, it's not where, you know, I was hoping that the budget was going to come in that, but I, I realize the situation that we're in, and I, and I do appreciate the uh, increases that they did put in there. Um, but, you know, depending upon what happens on later in the year with, uh, when free cash gets certified, you know, I would be coming back to see if there's something else that we can do uh, to address some of the things that the finance committee did not put in the budget. Some of those things are very important, like, you know, uh, the training of uh, police officers in, in, in uh, tactical situations and, and as well as the uh, uh, emergency equipment that I spoke to the board and then the public about in the past about I wanted to do uh, through a couple of steps uh, in stages, increase the, the type of emergency equipment we have to be able to respond to you know, active shooters. We, so you're, you're talking about preparing for like a new town scenario. Absolutely. You know, it's reality. Um, but what happens if we cut your budget 3% now as opposed to waiting until halfway through the year and then having to whack the hell out of it? 6%. 8%. 6 or 8% then. Because it's later in the year. You've already gone through some of your budget. Would you rather do 3 Honestly, that would, that would uh, be greater uh, of cut. Would we be better off doing 3% now and then coming back when free cash is certified and, and maybe giving some of that 3% back as opposed to not having anything now and taking a 5 or 6% cut and then not having anything later on. Mike, are you but talking, are you talking a 3% increase for everybody? No, 3% cut from this budget. From, from this budget. How else are you going to do it now? Well, in some cases, it's hot, they're, they're going to be walking away or greater, greater than 3% increase. Some departments. Well, I, I, some of that we'd have to look, go back and look. But I, I'm taking the gross number here and saying we've got to get rid of three three percent of it somehow. Well, I'm looking at it from a different perspective. I think I'd like to see us save two hundred thousand dollars, at least two hundred, at least a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars off the free cash, and put it where it's going to do the most good. Um, speaking from my budget. It's going to have an impact, and this time around, I mean, we tried to work furloughs in the past. I'm looking at it, I'm probably a guy going, we're going to get down to that point because I can't meet the contractual obligations. So. Um, and they have to work 40 hours a week. We, we tried to furlough, but work has to get done, so I'm looking at laying somebody off, which we're going to pay unemployment for. That's right. one scenario, but I do think we, we need some kind of a reserve in here. And I know you used almost 500000 on what we had, but... We need to have something to fall back on. I mean, whether we, you know, a tree falls down and takes out three cruisers at the police station, you've got to have some money to replenish certain things that might be an act of God you're not prepared for, but we need to have some money set aside. We, we can do that. We can go back. Uh, but, Mike, are were you saying 3% reduction in the fiscal 13 budgets? Yeah, I'm saying. So they're, they're push, you're pushing them back from 13. I just want to make sure well, which budget you're talking. I'm taking your gross number. I'm taking your gross number of $15 million dollars and right, right, right. saying somewhere we've got to cut three, two to three percent of that yeah. to put some money aside and, and whether it's an across the board two to three percent or whatever. I'm not saying that's my decision at this point in time, but I know the number is we need to come up with 400000 roughly to split up 100 and 100 and pay the 92 and whatever else is there. Well, we need 200000 for the school right there. So yeah, you're, you're still talking a larger number. Right. So you're talking 600000 600000 So... I don't know we're going to get $600,000. Uh, we have somebody from the public here. So you, you, One second. This budget is based on a belief that the police department will continue to be able to do the job that they have done for many years. And I'm not sure that's true. 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 I'm not sure that
can get the whole six hundred thousand. No longer pay state right. And what are we basing that on? Because I can't believe that we're the only town that is struggling with this. That the other towns are not going to come back and say. Uh, it's, it's, we are the only town. Yeah. We're the only town. It always goes this way. And so the city is. One second. Wait a minute. Let's uh, go ahead with your question. So yeah. So you're saying the other three towns, three towns, four. five, five towns. towns. So the other four towns are going to vote for the whole six hundred thousand. Three of ours said yes. Put it in their budget. Portion. Waiting for one to come back. And as soon as the fourth one comes back, we're done. <laughs> yeah, help me. You gotta understand that three of the towns, three of the towns have an increase of maybe a half a percent or one percent, very minor dollars. I think the fourth town, it was Chesterfield, if I remember right, has a ninety-five thousand dollar increase. Is that right? So they're kind of uh, on the border. But if they vote for it, then that automatically kicks us over. Is that Chester, roughly? Yeah. To our knowledge, at this point, Chesterfield has said they will fund it. So is that the fourth town? Which was the fourth town? Uh, Goshen. Yeah. And what was their percent increase? Uh, Goshen was percent. So I'm going to guess that's going to go. Okay. So now ours is 11.8%. Oh, actually, I take it back. Goshen's was 9. Okay. How much was it in raw dollars? But um, it's about uh, 30, $34,000. $34,000. No. So you're saying, though, we go ahead with at least 400000 and we wait until free cash is certified and see if we have the extra 200,000 there? Uh, can anybody see free cash going up an extra 200, 300? No, what we have, what we have is 494,000 in free cash. Well, yeah, but you got to fold back in those things you wanted. Right, but no, no, I'm saying the raw number is 494,000. So, so say you fold those two back in, you've got stabilization for 200,000, right? Yeah. You got you've got 112, thousand dollars to pay back the uh, regional for last year no i should see here now the stabilization yeah stabilization for last year so that's 112 so you got three hundred and twelve thousand dollars right there right i mean we thought we were doing well when we had 494 because we were looking at that number as the largest we've seen in a long time and you're going to eat it up if you want to put the fifty thousand dollars back for the complex you've got three six <coughs> and, and i'm not saying that the fifty thousand dollars for the complex the whole purpose of that was to try and keep that project moving along so that as the debt exclusion for the school and the library expired, we would get it put on a public safety complex. The taxpayer wouldn't see an increase. They would have to vote it, obviously, but they would technically shouldn't see much of an increase, if any, increase because those other ones will be falling off their taxes. I think we're going to go back to the days where we're going to say, not me. Do we want a library, or do we want a policeman, or do we want a highway worker? I mean, it, uh, when I was out, outside there, one, one person said, you know, if we have a shortfall, why don't we close the library? I went, you kidding? You know, it's just, we're, we're going to It's people's start fighting department against it's department. It's people's self-interest. It's what you use. If, if, you, if you use the ambulance service, then you want to make sure the ambulance service is there. If you're a, a, a woman who has an abuse issue, you want the cop there when you call them. So it's, it's the self-interest and the library, the patrons of the library want to see the library maintained. All of them have good reasons for its services. I don't know of any service the town delivers that is not a good service. The problem is we have to get the most money or the most value for our money. And I, I, I'm shocked that the schools, the regional coming in from 9% or something. 11.8. 11.8. That's a staggering number. And, and one of the numbers that we can do the least amount about, yeah. except make it. That's it. Well, if you look at, you know, you just talked about contracts that you signed with the highway and the police and all that, and you were talking about two percent, two and a half percent. Then why are these wages going up six and ten and twelve percent? Where? Where? You know, if you look at, you know, police that police salary and wages. Even though they took away the 30, it's up 6%. Well, it may be more people on you know, staff. Communication is 10% up. But some of the ways. You know, the winter roads is up 12%. I mean, so if you're talking 2.5% versus 10, that's a big change. What else is in those wages numbers? When we put wages on That's just that 2.5%. Well, it's, there's overtime. There's overtime and all that. So Part -time. What, what are those things that you can. But I think well, that's, what you're gonna, that's what if you do across the board 2 or 3%, yeah. that's the kind of thing that's going to. Any overtime is going to have to be thought about before it can be given out. 
but you get into winter roads and we have to plow. Well, you have to plow. Now, I guess I'm just saying, that, you know, you talked about that two and a half percent, and these are up more than that because of those other types of situations that people sure. need to look at and say, okay, well, we're gonna have to slow that down. Yeah, yeah I think so. I think that if, if Chief Silvana will expound on it, I think sometimes he has to hire part-time officers to cover vacations and some of that goes along with where that other percentage comes into wages. I mean, this whole problem could be fixed, frankly, if it didn't snow next year because $309,000 is winter roads. And if it doesn't snow and it doesn't freeze and rain, we've just found $300,000. But it doesn't work that way. We have to plan for it. And we've in the past have frequently short, shorted that winter roads account because it's easy to do. If you don't know what you're going to spend. But frankly, we finally got it to a number that's relatively comfortable, I hope. It's comfortable. You're comfortable. And as long as it's an average winter, we'll be okay. But if it's a below average winter, we'll have some extra money in next year. And if it doesn't snow at all, our problem's fixed. But some of the drop in fire. We need more firemen. Yeah. And I mean, the chief's plan of adding weekend coverage, I mean, we'll have to look at that and see how many runs we do on a weekend as opposed to not. I mean, that's the kind of analysis we have to do on this. Well, I guess that was, you know, like you go to sign that contract for 2.5%. That's great. That's below the, you know, the override part. But then you have all those other charges that the salaries are getting. What well, besides that 2.5%? Well, do, we've, we've struggled over the last couple of years to offer, add police officers. I don't know that we did last year, but we have a couple, we did. We did last year. We did. So that's part of that increase. Yep. This building created a situation where we needed a maintenance worker to take care of this building, so we we always had that cost. Like, yeah, but we didn't we had a higher we had a half a person right. Mike, Donna has a thought. I just want to say that if you go across the board, I mean, you kind of have to look at the individual line items because my my wage line didn't increase at all. I am the same as I was for 13 after the, the non-union people got their raises. So if you take two or three percent out of my, you know, coffee treasurer wages line, then I'm gonna not even be able to afford to pay the two staff members I have at this current level that they're getting because mine already didn't go up. But what if we cut your budget by three percent, just hypothetically, two percent or three percent, and you decide where that the cuts are gonna come? Whether it's well, I mean, none of my line items went up, so I, I don't know. I don't and know. It's how not. It's not a good situation. It, it, you know, we didn't get the kind of the and the highway, the people that are union are getting their contractual increases, but the non-union people are not getting, we're not getting any increases this year. They're not built in. We're, well, not, no. getting, we're not getting no. any increase this year. So then no. you go and take away 2 or 3% out of... But your, your employees did get a raise based on what we did... Last year. Last year. But there, there, the people who are under contract are already getting increases. There's about $8,000 worth of raises. raises. Oh, right. Donna, wouldn't you want, would you, would you not want to know mm -hmm. that you had to make a two to three percent budget cut today I'm and just then and just 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 to hear me out just and then maybe free cash will come in and then we can go back and fund some of those those things just to get a balanced budget for the town meeting i mean does that sound reasonable well the one thing i, I don't agree with is taking free cash to fund everyday items because that's what gets us into the predicament we're in when you take free cash to fund you know things that not that are not one-time things then it increases our budget so the next year we're asking for a VAT plus because it increases our whole budget so that's what puts a town in the situation that we're in and not in, in using all of our free cash and not having not being able to balance a budget what i'm saying is the departments that went up 10 percent in certain line items i don't think that the, the departments that state level funded for the last you know over last year who are getting salary raises who are increasing their expense lines that we should be cut the same, same because we're because what the finance committee did was those people who asked for increases they cut the amount of their increase but they're still giving them an increase which is great if they can do that but why take it away from those who are staying level funded and are increasing in one cent well just to be clear i that was my idea off the cuff we haven't resolved that issue yet that's just one no, idea but i just right. want to make that point then. all right what i'd like to do is i give the select board another ch chance or, and then possibly finance committee and then go to the department heads and then the public if there's anybody here if that's okay just to get some organization going now jackie well, i just wanted to ask mr collins how this would affect him um, it, I guess it depends on what the, what the scenario is, but we, uh, you know, I, 
going to start with by saying that the, the Norris School, you just spoke about school of choice, you know, we typically have a, we typically have a waiting list. So um, we've, we've been able to attract, we've been able to attract other, um, other towns to come here. And I, and, and I do appreciate you being, um, you know, I appreciate what you can do in the towns as well. It's, it has been a benefit to the, to the Norris School. Uh, the last several years, the Norris School hasn't seen the, the increases. And when, if we look at it, Massachusetts schools are measured by a per pupil expenditure, and we are. There's 351 communities in Massachusetts, and 346 of them have been able to figure out how to spend more money for students than, than we do. Right? This is, they've all figured this out. How do they do that? And if we start laying off folks, because I've so, I've cut materials, I've cut supplies, I've cut maintenance. I'm, I'm now, it's a really, it's a people-oriented business, education. And if I move to cut, if I have to cut, folks, and, and there is a year's worth of the school committee and their wisdom have a year's worth of school choice that we're not spending out in the same year that it's coming in, so that we can spend out and uh, and know that if we need to use more of that, there's a there's a little bit of a buffer to do that. It's part of the part of the wisdom of it. Um, but if we have to cut, start cutting positions, we will become less attractive. But Bill, we where, will not have the where did what what's the two hundred thousand dollar increase in your budget? Where is it going? So it's really it says four percent. It's rounded up. So it's, it's three six seven, right? But where is it going? What's it buying? Um, the, the vast majority of is the vast majority of is uh, salaries. We have a we have a we have a um, special education out of district situation that, that by law we just have to fund. Um, and then the other is a little bit to restore some of the maintenance. I cut it back too far. We cannot maintain the school on the maintenance budget that I have. The out of uh, the out of district placement of that of that party was that does that exist prior to this or is this the first year it's in the budget next year will be the, it's it's a situation that is changing it's outside of norris's control it's right. not, but is he is control. he part of norris's budget now there is a piece for the out of district portion that out of district portion is going to change and become much more expensive okay. i mean at, at norris uh, and you were saying you have this school choice fund going forward and if I remember what John uh, Fitzpatrick was saying, it's roughly four hundred thousand dollars now. So I guess three sums. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a possibility to take some. But, but like you said, if you roll forward one year in the wrong year, it could be upside down too. So it's. Let me come back to the select board and questions. I'm just wondering how we got to this point today, not knowing about the possibility that there would be this six hundred thousand dollar hit, likely and how we haven't been talking about it and getting it in our budget before today. Well, the $600,000 hit we knew about right along when they submitted the budgets. It's we're late putting it together for various reasons, that, okay. but, so, but we still have it. it and, but this is going to be a continual. It's never going to go away. Okay. This is not new. We've been dealing with problems like this. So before. I would like to hear from the Finance Committee what their rationale is for the way they would like to handle it. Uh, and, I, and I would come back to that once and everybody here has had their, their yeah. Cynthia, it's been a pleasure to work with you over the years. You're actually, you may be working with me longer. <laughs> 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 but I no, Cynthia was retiring. Uh, well, <laughs> the, theoretically, July 31st is my last day, but we, uh, Applications for my position have not been. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be sticking around. Security. So I, 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 um, oh. I'm retiring, but I may be back. Um, that you may be working with me longer than you think you're going to work. Well, with Cynthia, me. I just I, I really would like a, a straightforward question about, you know, you've seen us up here. You've heard me talk in the past. You know that yeah. I'm committed to the schools, but I'm also committed to the police, the EMS, the fire the highway. What does a selectman do in this position? I mean, how do I fix this? I mean, what would you re recommendations from an accounting standpoint, experience at regional, how does Southampton fix this so we're not in this position next year? How do we fix it? Well, 
The problem is you've been in this position forever. Forever. Since I've been here. Since I've been here. Uh, Southampton's been in this position. And I guess you have to decide what what services you want in town. When they passed two and a half, they passed they put in the law overrides. Knowing that at some point, and a lot of towns are arguing for that brick wall, that at some point there has to be decisions made in town whether people want to pay for service. We provide a lot of transportation in this town. How would we, if, if I drew a mile and a half circle around the school, this is about a mile and a half from the school, all the way up Conroy Meadow Road, and how about if we just said, you live a mile and a half from the school, you're on your own. You're not, no transportation. <coughs> and how much would that save? Because we had <coughs> talked, I remember the school committee had discussions prior yeah. years about just that. We could, um, What happened to those wonderful discussions? I, I'd say, well, I think it's an education process that if we said tomorrow, we're not transporting anyone under or over a mile and a half, right. I think you'd have revolution. We've had revolution just trying to consolidate bus stops. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's it's a process. It's it's something like going into the next bus contract. Somebody's going to have to start looking at routes and saying and educating parents that. Right, you're not advocating you walk wherever you're taking you take your kids. So there could be an advocacy program talking about the health, the health benefits of walking a mile and a half, how good it would be for the parents to walk with their kids a mile and a half. I mean, there's lots of ways to do this and make it attractive. Okay, but besides, uh, but I mean, right dump now, them out and let them walk. Let's come back to the question. Yeah, the question is that, I mean, both of our budgets, the regional and here, we've cut we've cut maintenance we've cut everything we're down to people so for us to reduce budget it's going to be terrific just out of curiosity just so we put a number on this Di doctor asked you about a, if we eliminate or you suggested eliminating that but if every bus route we eliminate what does it save us um hypothetically it's about uh, thirty-five thousand dollars per bus split between the regional and, and the elementary it's like the and Thank you. Did you have another question? No, I just want to thank you. I mean, it's been a pleasure to work with you, and you. wish you well in your retirement. I'll try and keep this going. Ed. Um, I'm, I'm sitting up here at this budget discussion for the first time as a selectman. I got voted in last year at this time, but I didn't have the chance to talk about the budget. But I've always worked on budgets for the highway department. I've also sat in the audience and listened to everybody have their inputs. I've seen many select boards and many finance committees, and yeah. Um, we, 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 we try to get by every year one at a time. But in 30 years that I've been here, we went from roughly 2,500 people to almost 6,300 people. We've had tremendous amount of growth. That growth has not offset the budget to the department. And I can say this as a whole, <coughs> I don't think there's any budget in here that has any fat. We've worked with it, we, we've tried with it, but we've been cut. I've seen where there's a $400 mistake, $400,000 mistake my first year, and we had a um, we had to adjust the budget halfway through in January with five months left to go. And you're talking taking 30 percent out of operation budgets that were already depleted down to maybe 40 percent of what they were. It was a nightmare. I don't want to see that again. But on the other hand, too, I don't think we can fund all these budgets with what we have here. And I don't think after, you know, we just passed the debt exclusion on the school roof, um, which everybody's going to get their tax bills, that we're, gonna, we're in a position right now to promote and push an override <laughs> at this short period of time. Um, I've been in support of, of overrides in the past, but right now I don't think it's going to work. We do have $497,000 in there. I'm not a proponent of spending all that money. I'm a proponent of spending a good part of that money to make sure that we can supply the services we have to have on the streets, we have to have in the library, and we have to produce in schools. That's my point. I do believe we need to set some of that money aside. I don't want to set it all aside because sitting in the bank doing nothing where I can do more good out in the streets of the departments is where it should go, but not all of it. And that's my observation on seeing that, and uh, hopefully we can find a solution very soon. 
Anything from finance? Oh, just that we went the, a little bit on the opposite end to try to kind of right the ship, if you will, with all these departments because in the past they've been cut, cut, cut. And uh, we wanted to support the services, figuring that as we go forward, they'll be in a good place so next year <coughs> we'll have a better opportunity. This is just going to bring us back to the same old, same old. I, I understand. We agree that there should be money in the, in the stabilization fund and all that stuff. It's just two different philosophies. And we can go back and agree to a number, say we want X hundred thousand dollars, and we'll go back and, and cut it. You know, we're going to have a lot of people out there that are, you know, it's, it's not a job that anybody says, thanks for cutting my budget. It's, and it's not up there either, you know what I mean? So. But that's what they pay us the big money for. Yeah. <laughs> Let us work the long hours for, I know. <laughs> um, anything further? So, Mike, where are we now? Where I'm going to throw it open to the department well, head. I, I okay, Derek. I think that, you know, we need, I mean, the Finance Committee took the budgets that were handed to us, and this was what we came up with. I think next year, and I know we're not looking at this year, but we need some direction from the select board to say, you can create, you know, department heads, you can create your budgets, but you can't go over 2.5%, 3%. Whatever you guys want to come up with as the town managers, because we don't really have a, we can't, we, we can't go in and, and, you know, take somebody's budget and cut it for less than what it was. You know, we just work with what's given to us. I think we need a little more cooperation between the select board and the finance committee to That's try and scale this down a little bit more. Anything else? Anything else? Um, I'm going to, any department heads? How's your chance? Well, I kind of said mostly what we kind of wanted yeah. to say. Um, the only thing I would add to that is obviously the purchase of a cruise is important. Um, but, uh, you know, insofar as Dave's question on whether he wanted to take a 3% cut now or a greater one later, um, I think I would ask to that, um, we'll probably know where the regional stands long before we get to that point. Um, so, uh, if we do end up having to come up with that extra money for the regional, um, I would suggest that the board can be put out to the uh, department heads at that point and stand by for, for cuts. Chief, just on that cruiser issue, how many cruisers do we have? We have uh, four marked, three marked cruisers, four including the Tahoe, or not the yes, Tahoe, um, and marked. And the cruiser you're looking to replace is which one? That's uh, one of the patrol cars that's got 100,000 miles on but still serviceable. Still run. So we can take that out of capitalization. That we don't have any capitalization. Yeah, we, well, we do. We have 112. 112. Oh, it's oh, a, oh, the capital, capital stabilization, stabilization yeah. not the capital account. Capital stabilization. capital stabilization. So we can take it out of that. We could, t we could talk about taking it out of that. So you, did you put a warrant together for that? An article for the warrant for that? Yeah. Yes. Yes, that's already been submitted. It's on the... Yes. For the cruiser? Yes. For the cruiser. It's on the uh, capital stabilization. All right. uh, Mike, can I just say one thing? Yeah, go ahead. Please. I'm going back. Well, I'd like to say as a, a parent of three children, one of the reasons I moved here was because of the school system and the reputation that it had. I mean, we had looked at Belchertown, East Hampton, and it always came back to the spectacular school, the teachers. And that's why we moved here. So that's one of our biggest assets to get more families uh, into Southampton. So I know we have to keep the budgets, you know, we have to do the right thing, but I just don't see cutting the school budgets. We, we, don't, want, we don't want parents with children. We want single adults. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I, didn't right. I didn't say that. And all those big, you know, houses that they just built. And that's why they came here, because of the school Because the school system, because it's right. one of the, I mean, it's our greatest asset. Anybody else from the department heads? Library? Library. Did you have a question? Questions, comments? That should be the slogan. Yeah. We'll coin that and put it on the on the seal. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, you, if you had more to say, I wasn't trying well, to cut you off. The other thing I want to say is, I guess the public, and I'm not sure how to do this, but, uh, you know, 
38 years ago, I moved to the town because of the school system also. Now, I think most people came to Southampton because there was certain amount of quality. But that quality does come with a price. And so, you know, I think a lot of people move here, but they don't want to actually pay for it. And so when we have this kind of, you know, budget things, people say, oh, you don't raise my taxes until, as you said, then all of a sudden, oh, I, I want the ambulance, I, I want my school system, all of that. And all of this, if you don't have the fire and the and, and, and ambulance and water and all that, that affects your other rates. People don't understand that. If you don't have fire and you're, you're, you're going to pay higher insurance. So it's, it's all intertwined, and, and getting that message out to the, to the public is where, where, you know, if you want to live in this town and you want to spend more than $50,000 or $500,000 on a house, it, you've got to pay for it. I'm sorry. You know, and the people who came here earlier, they put their time and, and taxes in here too, and, and they can't go sky high either. So there's got to be a happy compromise. Compromise. Yes, Mine, Cindy. Okay. I'm Barbara from the library. I agree with the chief in a way. Um, if we do have to do more money for Hampshire Regional, then you know maybe between now and then we can kind of look at our budget and see where we would cut three percent. But actually, our three percent went to maintenance costs. That was an increase mm -hmm. because we told the finance committee how much our maintenance cost really is. And it was never budgeted. It was never budgeted, or it wasn't taken care of, as like the rugs that Jackie talks about. <laughs> So that's actually, we just figured it out, that's 3% uh, would be to go back to level funding essentially. Um, so just to Remember, he's talking about 3% from the fiscal 13 level, not from the fiscal 14. Oh, you're, oh it's 3% from the fiscal. From well, I'm, no, I'm talking 3% off that $1.4 million or whatever it is. So off the fiscal fortune, right? Yeah. The budget, yeah, well, the top, the top yeah. number. What was Peter? Is that going to get us back to fifteen point one million? Yeah, whatever it is. That gets us back to if you take it from that number, the departments have already some departments have already seen large increases. So you'd be penalizing the small departments. Well, yeah, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't. I personally don't think you should. Anybody that's been fairly close to last year's budget no. shouldn't be considered. No, but I, I agree. I, yeah. I did a very broad generalization of a, of a number. Of where that number, ha the number I came up with, yeah. is 450,000, which is really barely enough to do what we needed to be done. Mm -hmm. And I just well, took the axe and did 3% to come up or whatever. Yeah, if, if you want to build the, the stabilization funds, I mean, one of the articles, for instance, says transfer uh, 162,000 to the all purpose operational stabilization fund. Now you're saying put $100,000 in each. So we, we don't know the parameters. No, but no, I, and I just, I, we're talking numbers and generalizations at this point in time. Because Ed is, Ed is correct. If some night a tree falls in the, in the woods yeah. and our cruisers are gone, <coughs> what's, where is that going to come from? And, you know, in this time we needed money in a hurry to do the roof project. We had that money. If we didn't have that money, we'd have been walking away from a 55% reimbursement from the state. I mean, that's why we need that. Those funds don't just sit there and do nothing. I mean, that money saved us 55% on their roof. Yeah, and I don't know if we can do short-term borrowing, but, but okay, let's assume that the, the regional school is going to cost us $600,000 plus. Boom. So that technically is the free cash. So then we got to go back and make cuts enough to rebuild the free cash base. Right. But no, if it's not 600, it's 200,000. Remember, you. No, no, we're taking $200,000. Uh, away from their increase, right? They right. requested over six hundred thousand dollars, eleven point eight percent. So, if you want to, so and if does anybody gonna, in the room believe we're not going to end up paying that six hundred thousand dollars? <laughs> does anybody in this room believe we're not going to pay that six hundred thousand dollars at some point in time? Do I have a second? <laughs> I guess I mean, not. <laughs> did anybody, when we cut the, the, the ninety-four thousand dollars from the budget last year, really think we weren't going to end up paying it? Dead silence. My point. But we're going to pay the 600000 plan 600000 in the budget. Do I agree with paying it? No. But at this point in time, our hands are tied and we're going to have to. But it's really the timing of when folks want to pay it. And it sounds like the department heads right now are saying, go with the budget now, see what happens as we go along, well, and then make the cuts. That's so one budget, that's one or one or two departments, because the alternative is, as we've said, you go halfway through the year, and that three percent now becomes six to ten percent. Well, how's my how's this for an idea? Yeah, and this is this. Then we're <laughs> deficit spending, and we've got. Wait, what do you know about the high school? The Hampshire, well, you already know. We already know. We already know. <laughs> All right, Mike, how about this for a strategy? When Hampton Chester Hills, Goshen. Yeah. 
How about this for a strategy? Yeah. So in and, 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 and in all fairness, there was a call many years ago when I was prior time a chairman. West Hampton called us and wanted us to get in to get it with them to try and get our because they were getting socked with the increase and they wanted us to go along with doing something to try and reduce theirs. And guess what we said? No. No. Uh, so but, uh, Mike, just we, we one year going back in time again. <laughs> it was brought up from the floor to balance with I think it was hundred ten, hundred and twenty thousand dollars for the school budget on a two and a half override. Obviously we knew that wasn't going to pass. And it didn't. But I mean, is that something we could do as well? Say, you know, this increase of 600,000 is based on a two and a half override? You're still going to pay it. You're still going to pay it. You gotta pay it. You gotta but I mean, it gives us some time to actually balance We're the budget. Time. You got time. You can do okay. the two and a half later. <coughs> <coughs> right. Yeah. Um, so $600,000. That's what the number. The, the, so increase, the increase is 457000 well, but you were saying you were using reserve. The amount that we had in last year's budget versus what you requested this year was six hundred okay. seven thousand. The amount, the amount that we yeah. had passed last year right. versus this year is like. But you use, like you said, some reserve money and all that stuff, and now you can't use it. So it's still you got a difference there. How much do we owe you? You owe us uh, four million three hundred eleven thousand. And how much more than we'll last year? For it. Which is four hundred and fifty-seven thousand dollars over the FY thirteen assessment. And we didn't pay you ninety-four for the FY thirteen assessment. We owe you ninety-four thousand. Well, they didn't ask for that money yet. Oh yeah. But they haven't asked. We don't need that. Yeah. Money. No, I think I think got a bill. Got a bill. I was got a bill. Say, I think that's enough. Yeah. Put it on the credit card. <laughs> oh. Um. Okay. Any more comments from the four fifty-seven? Bill. Just looking, and I, I know we have this dilemma in front of us. If we fast forward a few years, um, if the school is in a position to lay off, and, and right now the, the town does not fully budget the school, school of choice pays for a number of positions. Uh, and if other schools start to, because of cuts and stuff, start to become more attractive than the newer school, then we'll start to send more out. And, and, and right now, I think maybe we have two that go out and seven that come in. But if we change that scenario around, even if we split it 50-50, then it's a wash for us. And you know, I know there's a dilemma, but we need to think a few years, a few years ahead of that, and, and worry about solving solving this problem today and, and causing maybe a bigger one. But but you're driving to work one morning and you slip on the ice reload that hadn't been sanded and salted, and when they place the 911 call, there's no cop available and there's no ambulance attendant to come but get you. There won't be any. There won't be any Southampton children who are educated enough to pass the police exam. <laughs> <laughs> but there won't be a phone at the other end for them to pick up to get. I mean, it's just that everything is a cause and effect. Mr. Collins, do you live in town? No. Um, I do not. Yeah. No. But anyway, all right, Cindy, one last time. All right. And then anybody else? To be, to be warm and fuzzy here. I, I know we're that entity on the hill <laughs> that you think comes and sucks money out of your budget. There is a lot of thought that goes into the Hampshire budget. We are, the people on the board, the people on the finance committee of Hampshire are very cognizant of, you know, the town's finances and try and keep the budget within within uh, reference. Um, we part of our problem this year is revenue that we're you know we're just not in a position to throw as much money into budget as we have in the past. Um, where when I first came here, you were getting 13, 14, 9 percent increased budgets. You've gotten over the past three years. Two at two percent. This one's at like three, three and a half percent increase on the bottom line, and we're down to its people. So I mean, it's not like, and the same with the Southampton budget. The school committee really has consideration for the town. It's just that we need to educate the kids, we and we need, to, and we, we need just have to keep the kids safe. Okay. Yeah, and we need to. Well, we need to keep the kids safe in school, and we need to. How do you keep the kids safe in schools with? Making sure fire, police, and ambulance are on hand. 
Well, I think this is the whole point, right, of building a budget is competing interests and competing tensions. Right. We can't have it all exactly the way we want it. But we need lots of compromise. That come in year after year. All right. Lots we need compromise. to decide where we go from here. Yeah. Wait, let yeah. me just throw well, one comment in. I'm talking about kids' safety. Um, and yeah, I think you ought to know that there's police officers who have never been to the region. And if there was an incident at the regional, there's no full-time officers in West Hampton. They rely upon the state police, which can take as long as up to 20 minutes to get there. Uh, and so one of the things that I had proposed in, in the training section of my budget proposal was for us to actually be able to have all of our police officers go up and practice lockdowns and um, do an actual, um, with what they call simulations, a school shooter event. We did this several years ago at the North School. Safety has came in and helped us. We, um, they have like light firing guns where they're actually shooting projectiles. Um, and it's incredible training for the officers to go through. Uh, they not only learn, you know, how to tactically and safely move through the hallways, but they also learn what's cover and what's concealment, how not to get shot because you're getting shot at by these, these sort of like a paintball type thing. We've never done that at the regional. Um, and one of the things that I would like, and I think it's important for us to do, is to have that practice at the region. Um, the reality is, up until Newtown, there had never been really grammar school mass killings. They've always been in high schools. So, so statistically, the high school is the more likely place for this to happen. And there's no question, I'm sure, in your minds or my mind, that if something goes on up there, we're getting called, and we're going to be heading up there. And we got people that aren't even familiar with the layout of the building. Um, so it's a very important thing to consider when we're having this discussion about children's safety. Everything has its cause and effect. All right, where do we go? How do we go? Mm -hmm. Tell us what you'd like. We'll All go right. back and. The select board want to voice their opinions? And 1.5 million dollars in free cash. Huh? 1.5 million dollars in free cash somewhere? Balance the budget? No, come up with a better solution than that. Well, I mean, if, if, if in talking to the department heads that are here, if you want to move forward with, well, if this is not the time to acquiesce to the department heads, I'll say, I'll speak my piece as, as, as chairman. Well, I'm just saying, if, if the job, the job is here to make the hard decisions, not passing it on to the department heads. Well, what I would decide is exactly what you would say, Michael, is I would put the money back that we said we were going to put back, because we need to put it back for the rainy day that we took. I would put that money back. And I would take a police cruiser out of the capital improvement, give them a police cru cruiser, and wait out the storm on the school. Um, more than likely, it's going to pass, and then we're going to have to make budget cuts sometime in July and August, and maybe by the time we'll have some more free cash. Yeah, and then we can balance that out. And I, I, I'll say my piece, even though the chief is still here. I would say that, unfortunately, we'd have to hold off on that cruiser. As long as it's serviceable, we'll push it as far as we can. And if at some point in time it, does, it becomes to the end point, then we'll have and to take it out of capital. Then and take it out of capital. That's what it's there okay. for. But that cruiser is still sir. If it's like when we did the ambulance, there's been a couple of years when we pushed the ambulance one more year just to try and make it go to save the money up for the next time and makes it easier. If Chief somehow miraculously gets that cruiser through the, the year without a problem, then we'd be in a better position to replace it next year than we are now. And I'm crossing my fingers as I say that. But it's like my own vehicle at home. Sometimes I make a choice that I have to drive it one more year despite what I'd like to do. You're going to have to get agreement from the chief because he can put it on the warrant. And oh, we, anybody can, you know, and there can be amendments from the floor. But I mean... Well, I'd like also just keep in mind on the cruisers, we skipped the cruisers a couple of I, years. I know we did. We like two in the same year. I know. Um, so in the management, um, I watch these cruisers in mileage very closely. I rotate the cars around to try to get the most life out of them. And, uh, you know, we average... Uh, you know, running the cars out of its service life once a year. Uh, and I, I appreciate all that, David, and I understand you do that, and I'm asking for a, a big sacrifice, and I know that. And, I'm, and, I'm, and I personally am playing the odds that when I need you, the car starts to come get me. Um, and I understand the rationale there. Um, but I, I, somebody's got to make these decisions at this point in time, and, and that's the way I would go. I, I kind of handle it that way, but I, that's me. So. We're talking about line items right now. We're talking about specific. I think they're looking uh, for. I think they're talking about. I, I addressed the specific car as a counter to David McDougall, but I think the finance committee wants us to know, wants to know what 
we want them to do. So what about the overall approach? That's what we're asking for. Okay, so would you go with what the departments are saying about keep the budget as is and then make the cuts as we Me personally? No. Necessary. As a manager, no. Well, no, not you, we. I, well, I'm saying I, that's how I would vote. I would not vote that way because I, from a management point of view, I'd rather deal with a smaller cut now and hope that I get more money than deal with paying me now and getting a big <coughs> cut later on, which we probably know is coming. But they're talking about being at such a, a level that they're going to have to do layoffs. It's going to hurt. And such. So it's going to hurt. There's so much uncertainty out there. Why do this draconian approach right now? I don't think anybody's going to get laid off on a 3% budget cut right now. Well, well again, we're not going to cut, not, not we're not cut 3% on their requested budget this year on everybody because that's not fair. We go back to the high users. we got to go back to the right. high users and cut them more. But the regional is the highest user. And, and that's the one that's out of our control. Now is Norris School? John, uh, just a question. What is the shortfall um, for the regional in the Norris School? Well, the, it, it shows an 11.8% increase, and depending on how you factor it, four or five hundred thousand dollars up. Uh, and the Norris was 200 increased, I believe. That's you, I, don't two, I mean, according to your budget, you're you cut one two hundred one one hundred thousand. Right. So that was just a decrease to the increase. That's the current budget, uh, and that's three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, my comment um, on how we should approach it, and it's yeah. probably different than everybody else. My comment is, I'd like to see two to two hundred fifty thousand dollars left alone in that free cash to be flexible enough to put it where it's going to have to go when we need it. For us to put it into stabilization point at this time. I think is not a good move because it doesn't give us the flexibility to move it in and out because now we're talking about a two-thirds vote versus a simple majority. So no stabilization. And that's my comment. I'm right. speaking for the board, but it's out there. And adjust the line items accordingly with what we discussed by all members here is that budgets that are fairly close to what they were last year, don't touch them. But the ones that have got the cuts, that's where it's got to come from. And we have to start with that on day one. I guess what we need is the consensus of the board. What, what the, we need to know what the number is that we need to save off the budget from whatever department you take. There is a consensus. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I don't think I hear a consensus. Well, we haven't got a general consensus. What's the amount you want to keep in free cash? You want to keep 200? Well, and, I, and if I, I, I appreciate Ed's position, but I would take it at least put something into those stabilizations. And I, I understand the flexibility of free cash. I would reduce my. I mean, the only reason why I want to keep that money here is if we have to come up with a dollar amount for either one of these schools, we have the flexibility to get to it. If not, we got to have. What are you talking about? Not funding them? Not funding this? Well, the budget. Well, no, no, no. going along with their their proposed Using budget, their 100, 100 to two hundred thousand dollars, and see what it have, happens when all five times roll on this. So you're saying go along with the finance committee's reductions of the school department budgets, both school departments, all the budgets that they reduced, and then. Uh, I mean the reduction of the increase. The reduction on the right a, side of the page here that and they suggest honor those. Dollars. And then instead of putting it all in there, keep two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollars and reduce the rest of the budget accordingly. By the two hundred fifty thousand. By the two hundred fifty thousand. I'd buy that. So the four major department budgets. That's where we're going to get the extra funds from. Well, anybody who's got an increase. I mean, you got some small budgets that have gone up 10 12 percent, they should be considered. Okay, so if we do the 2 two fifty, we also got to take the 2000 for the uh, 200000 for the regional school and add that to there because everybody is basically saying, and I agree, it's going to get overridden. So that's four, 450 we're looking for. That's that's my suggestion to the board. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little confused on that, but is, is Say it, it again, John? So, you want to see two hundred thousand dollars to cover the Hampshire Regional, and then you want to see two hundred fifty thousand dollars left in free cash. Four fifty. Well, that's four fifty again. We're right back to the same number. Back to four fifty. They're just just broken out different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to save four hundred fifty thousand dollars on this budget. Is what we're saying. All right. We need to find four hundred fifty thousand dollars in cuts. But are we going to pay the obligations for last year? God. Well, we can get sued like we did four years ago and had to go to court, and then they got their money to the courts. But, I mean, it, it's 
Excuse the expression. It's, it's, it's easy to say cut all this, but we got to <coughs> make sure we know what we're cutting because if we're putting that amount of money back in, then we're coming up with another 112,000. So, so I think we want to pay our obligations first. Well, we got a bill. Bill's yeah, due. I have the bill. We have a bill for ninety-four thousand dollars. Oh, it's for the nine hundred and. But it's ninety-two thousand dollars short, right? It's ninety-two thousand dollars short. Right, yes. and we got to come up to ninety-two. Our funds is right. ninety-two thousand dollars. This, all right, let's do this. Is there a motion from the select board that when that that bill should get paid at some point in time? So moved. Second. That ninety-two thousand's got to get paid. Right. That's the, what we're yeah. voting on. Not, it will, okay. Um, right. Any further discussions? Where's it coming from? It's coming. From free cash. Free cash. So it's got to get paid. It's already, already, that's why I was coming. It's already part of the It's already on. It's, it's yeah. already on. All I'm looking for is this board to support that that bill is eventually, that we're not going to protest that bill or not pay it or get, get sued over it. I want it that we're going on record that we don't want to get sued for that bill. Yes. Right. You're basically looking for $450,000. So what you're asking us to do is to get big departments for a hundred grand plus a little a little bit more and see if we can find fifty thousand out of the smaller departments is, is what you're asking us no, I, don't, I don't think the smaller I, I don't think the I four departments should bear it I mean there's a lot of budgets out there nickels and dimes out of the dollars you should be looking at everything we can look at everything Ed, but it's, wait, wait, I understand it's, what you're saying you, you, I gotta get back to the vote wait a minute smaller there, stuff. can I stop you for a second I gotta get back to the vote on that you had a motion in a second. second any further discussion Hearing none, all in favor. Aye. 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 Is that? Okay. Santa Claus. Um, all right. I, I think we're still arguing over the semantics of what we're doing here. We're not arguing. We're just no, I mean discussion. We're not arguing. We're just telling you that that the smaller budgets. I don't think we should touch the smaller budgets. Fifty thousand dollars out of the smaller budgets. I, I think all the budgets have to be on the table. Do I expect you to find hit them? Do I personally expect you to hit them in the same proportion as the departments that were looking for a big increase? No. But Mike, we just talked about earlier that we weren't going to touch the very small departments with the very small budgets because it's, if they were it's a disproportionate uh, but I think, they, I think you've got to look at those budgets in, in all fairness to everybody. How about if we look at them and we make a decision and if we can get it off in the big budgets, we're good. What are the numbers we're talking about right now? So Something like that. Uh, I still, I still have a handle on so, Did you so, hear what John said? I no. think that was a good idea. Well, we'll look at it and if we can avoid it, we won't touch them. If we can't, we will. Right. But well, you're looking at roughly 450 sitting there in free cash so that we can deal with the HRHS and we can deal with the 2 250 of free cash. If we need it down the road. So, so you, what you're saying now is you have to take 450 from the existing budgets that are already you have already put together, yeah. and, and get that somehow out of those budgets to come up with the paying the regional and setting aside $200,000 for free cash. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Correct. Now, as long as you don't want to put the 50,000 for the complex back in and all that stuff, because that no, just no. rolls. I'm to put that back in. No. Okay. Would? I would. No. What's that? The public safety complex. Keep it moving. No. 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 What, we, we, I mean, I tell you what, late, at what expense? Yeah. Putting a cruise in the Wait, wait. wait. Let, let's. The, David first. Well, I'm just saying I would be supportive of it, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. But I think you need to keep that project moving forward because the building over across the parking lot is housing three quarter million dollars worth of equipment in a building. Chief, how old is the fire, firehouse now? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't they, they went to Chief Parker, but that tells you how old. Preservation. Uh, 550 was one of the first school houses. Oh. So it's so more than a century old. If we had an earthquake here, and we do get earthquakes, and it is a brick structure, I think we would have some damaged equipment over there. I'm sorry. If you have a strong wind. <laughs> <laughs> so, can, I, can I say something at this? Uh, uh, sure, why not? Former Chief Parker. You, you were talking about the, uh, the safety complex. Um, you know, this project should get started now because it's two and three years down the road. And it's not going to take a lot of money to do what we have to do. And I think we've done a lot of things. Um, my, my feelings on this complex is you have to have a project ready to go because there will be money from the feds down the road. Okay? And by, by, uh, by saying that, I'm talking about the site preparation. Surveying the, uh, the, uh, 
title searches is updated. And the sub what they call the subterranean. Well, and I there was an email that came out today with a proposed budget, and that fifty thousand dollars was it thirty nine thousand? No, oh, she was yes. thinking yes. So Just so everybody right. knows that we threw a number of fifty. How much? We oh. broke it down. We, it was the total was thirty nine thousand, as I recall. I had an email today from Charlie Kinnicky on the on this building committee. Um, we had thrown the number fifty thousand dollars out, just as some number to put out there. The actual estimate that Charlie came in, not that it's a big difference, is 39,000. Um, not that it's a whopping big difference, but the 50 really is 39 at this point in time. Well, I thought there was 39 for architectural engineer and the rest was. And that's why I read know, it. Site, plan, uh, site prep, uh, exploratory for septic. Uh, survey and then add up to 50,000. But uh, the, 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 I, I think that part of it was. I was good. unclear, but I, when, it, I mm -hmm. when I saw the email, and if this was a different email, it there was four or five different items. Yeah. Uh, and the last item was architectural um, uh, feasibility, 36 or 37,000. And there was all these other items like site preparation. Uh, and it had an item there, uh, um, per test with town backhoe. Four thousand survey study, eight or nine thousand, and stuff like that. Can you get the email? Up? Can we come back to that in a minute? Where did Eileen go now? She just walked up. All right. Then we'll, 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 let us go get that thing. But you know, what I'm saying is, you get a little bit of money, we'll keep this project moving forward. Well, then maybe we don't do the whole. Maybe the suggestion, it, and just to keep the discussion alive, maybe you don't do the whole fifty or thirty-nine thousand. Maybe. Maybe do the preliminary stuff for 10,000. 10,000. No, because I hate to see the they no money that the committee just dissolves. No, you got a point, Bill. And, you know, I'd rather take small steps that know where we're going before we go for the big, for the big. Yeah, we put a lot of effort into engineering and architectural. Let's, let's have Reggie come back and with the numbers, and maybe it's everything but the final. Um, the bigger <coughs> number, the architectural plan. And we can do the site work and all of that no, sort of <coughs> to keep it moving. And then if there's if if through some miracle if there's free cash along the way, then maybe that gets more money again. You know, your issues tonight, God bless you all, because I've been at this for a long, long time. And Robert. Budget. Robert, could I ask you to go get Eileen? Can you, get can you put me? I think she wants me to do something with this, and I'm not I, sure. I just the results. But I don't, I don't want to do it unless I know. Would you just ask her if that's what she wants me to do? I believe it is the plan. Thank you very much. This budget issue is nothing new. We go through this every year. I'm sure you're aware of that. I've seen all the streetlights in town shut off at one point. Um, God bless you. All right. So, what, Reggie's going to bring us in the letter on the preliminary and see if we can come up with a number that's smaller than uh, are they? yes yeah. okay all right I've been handed the t election results by the t I'll come back we'll come back to that Reggie's going to get the the uh, the letter the memo but I've been handed the uh, results by the town clerk um, to read off the election results um, moderator Robert Floyd 283 blanks 86 writings three board of selectmen Blanks, five. Elizabeth Moulton, 216. John Martin, 139. Timothy Judd, 12. Write in zero. Assessor's race, no, no can. 346 blanks, no candidate. School committee, uh, blanks, 119. Melissa Kelly, 248. Write-ins, five. Board of Health, blanks, 106. Ronald Lauren, 266. Write-in, zero. City or County Councilor, blanks, 100. George Simborski, 271, write-ins, 1. Hampshire Regional, blanks, 117. William Curran, 255, write-in, 0. Library Trustee, blanks, 485. Teresa Barton, 256. Deborah Pinsky, 257. Allison Strollis, 243. Patrick Wright, 247, write-in, 0. Almoner, Elizabeth, and blanks, 96. Elizabeth Kucher, 276, right in zero. Tree Warden, David, blanks, 98. David Garska, 271, right in three. 
Cemetery Commissioners, Blanks 120, Christopher Bowen 249, Wright Ins 3. Park Commissioner, Blanks 108, Mark Reed 262, Wright Ins 2. Housing Authority, Blanks 117, Anne Marie Darcy 255, Wright Ins 0. Finance Committee, Blanks 460, John Martin 253, Wright Ins 31. Water Commission, Blanks 109, Thomas Neal 258, Wright Ins 5. Policy and Procedures Board, Blanks 100, Timothy O'Leary 270, Wright Ins 2. Planning Board, Blanks 110, Tiffany Labrie 260, Wright Ins 2. Total number of ballots, 372. Congratulations to all the winners. Oh, okay, so it, it still does total 30, 50,000. It was the 39 was not, it was a, was a preliminary, not a total. But the other thing was with total what? Uh, 9,500. So are we going to include the complex, do you think? Anybody on the board want to speak to that? The, the public safety complex putting some money towards getting the preliminary work done as opposed to the architect? Again, I just, um, looking forward to what's going to be needed. I mean, when we were in the old town hall, this is no lie, you could stand in the parking lot and look through the chimneys. And it was at one point that the facade was falling off, the bricks were falling off the house. That's where our police department still is. And, you know, I, I still say that this town needs to move forward. I think uh, after being on the public safety committee, visiting all the other towns that do have them, including Granby, this town needs to move forward with that project. Mm -hmm. the town needs. Wow. Do we have any idea how much this complex would cost by chance? Excuse me? Mm -hmm. Do we have any idea how much this complex would cost? Um, between around three to four million dollars. And do we know how much that would add to the tax base? I'm just thinking that's, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a total guess. If we had land right. and blah, 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 blah. But that's a debt service that, again, goes on top of it, and nobody has a choice well, once it's voted in. But the school is coming off, and the library is coming off, and that those will far and exceed what that Okay. $5 million. So thinking of running them. So that was a reason just to keep moving and then it would hit the ground running if it passed by the voters. Then we would continue on in the debt service. You wouldn't see any change in the debt service. I mean, the so you want us to try to find that money? I think so. that's what we should. We should at least find everything but the $39,000 for the preliminary plan. My, my two cents on this, and Bill, jump in if you're talking about it. This preliminary work, number one, which is the forming soil test and uh, requirements for Title V is 800. The second one is $250. You need a wetland delineation and, a, and, and, and that. And three, you need a deed and plan research on the property because there are issues over there. Uh, our paperwork says no and, and right other school on. paperwork that was here before says we own it. Okay. That has to be straightened out. And then uh, the last thing is the title search of the property to straighten out where these lines are. My comments and my feedback from these boards are they have two or three sites they need to evaluate to make sure those sites are proper for this complex. And the one that they're talking about right now, I believe, is behind the fire station. Correct. If that fails, they have to jump around and look at a couple more sites they have. So it behooves us to at least start picking the sites and giving the information and the material they need to pick the site. And I think the first four items would give you that opportunity right the architectural thing part of this for 39 five would come in later and that would have to be after they pick the final site so, so we're looking my for feeling 10, is 10,000 as a selectman uh, not to exceed 10,000 so I'm gonna say something yeah, go ahead. I think it's a very worthy goal and the town should look forward to doing this but we obviously do not have it in the budget right now it's a new um, it is a progressive and a, a wonderful thing to consider, but we don't have in the budget. So why are we all of a sudden talking about adding this hunk of change and other laying off teachers or squeezing everybody else's budget? So I'm absolutely think it's a great idea for the future and not now. You know, um, this is a comment I had. Before we were in this building, we were across the street. Right. I we, we had a lot of issues with the building across the street. We had a lot of asbestos issues and stuff like that. But that particular building, the reason why we were in violation, we had so many holes in the building, we transferred the air through that building so readily, we weren't in violation. But 
we have an issue here with the police department in the same building, in the, in the basement with more problems, which I've dealt with several times this year, he's been dealing with. Uh, it's a severe more problem. We don't need to subject people that work there in those conditions. Now the fire department, you heard from Bill Barkham, he was the chief there and you heard from the current chief. We are issues there. We need to put something toward the progress of these committees to stay intact, to continue on, so we are in position to get this well, funded. Theoretically, ten thousand dollars of this right. is not a um, a deal breaker. It it's going to be hard to get, but it's not a deal breaker. Well, I agree theoretically with what you're saying, but it sounds like we don't really have it in our budget. Yeah, so, well, I think I, it's just can I like to say something? Um, obviously. We don't have it on budget, but ten thousand dollars maybe we can squeeze out of here just to do the preliminary work. But then there's so many. Well, you are uh, an avid grant writer, or you find money somewhere. I mean, if we base it on finding alternative resources for capital to get this program going, I mean, is there programs out there that we? Can I mean, I was surprised when Bill said that there was programs out there because preliminary when I was in the first part with David and the first committee was established. Even for this building, we hunted for money and money and money. We found no money. Well, we know we found fifty thousand uh, dollars for a marketing study <laughs> and a feasibility. Yeah, we study. didn't use it for a certain. We almost business. had to pay that. We almost had to pay that. Well, we were able to use it though. There was fifty grand. So let me ask you this: Is there a committee? Which I don't want to be on because I've got enough <laughs> going on. But I mean, is there a committee or something right now working on yes, finding yes, alternatives? Yes, yes. Yeah, What's it called? Public safety. Uh, um, Public safety. Public safety. They're actively looking building for committee. grants. Yeah, and the other thing is, that going back to the deeds, so the deed that is in, in on yeah. file for this property is wrong. Huh? It, it says there's a deed restriction here, but the deed restriction is across from the golf course. So when we were looking at property for where to put a public safety complex, we came across all the deeds and it just didn't make sense. So there is there's the actual issue with the deed that has to be fixed for the fire department. And in the process, you can look at the property and see if it's the, the choice to be made. I think it's worthy to go forward. And then when the debt exclusion comes off, hopefully by then, the project's ready to go, we'll have the funding for the town that doesn't really change the bottom line because the debt exclusion will continue. Can That's I um, introduce a question here? Yeah. I need Vicky's input. How much money is left in the feasibility study that was done for the old town hall? Isn't there several thousand dollars in there? Taking that yet? No, we haven't taken it. It's still sitting there? Yeah. Capital? Yeah, it's capital. Feasibility study for the old town hall. I have planning, master plan. Yeah. No, not planning. It was a feasibility study unless there was, there, was a, there was a balance there in the feasibility study because I think we gave 35000 that didn't come in that high. But I don't know. It's gone. It's gone. Okay. All right. I was thinking we could Can I make a suggestion? Because we we're talking longer for 10000 than we did for 450 uh -huh. How about you let us look and see if we can find the extra 10000 and then come back to you with that? Well, I want to make a motion. I want to make a motion that we have $10,000 as an article for town meeting for the feasibility, for the uh, preliminary work on the site of the evaluation to the public safety complex. Second. Any further discussion? If it's going to be an article, we need to still find the money. So we got to find the money. We're, we're, this is our, uh, it, they're making a policy decision. Yep. Further discussion? Okay, based on what John just said. I, no, I, I'm just saying, you know, I'm, I'm nervous. Like, and it's about finding another $10,000, which I believe we should, but I think that it's so hard to go to the town meetings and well, have all these articles and ask for more money when we're, our budgets are so this tight. This is into the budget. Uh, you're going to try and find this money into the budget. We're going to add it to that, I'm oh, sorry, add it to that extra 450 that we're finding. Yes. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? No, Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Stay here. <coughs> okay. Um, so I, do I read that as four positive votes? Did I hear that correctly? Four positive votes. Okay. All right. That's that issue is fine. I don't know where we are now. Lost track. God bless America. Um, well, how fast? Yeah. And this is a time frame for you guys. And I know it's how fast can we get back with some numbers tomorrow night? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> when do we have to sign more? Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Oh.
So do we need every single line item for the warrant or do we need a dollar amount? We need a dollar amount, we just take this, yes. reduce it. It's omnibus. We need a dollar amount. The spreadsheet is attached to the warrant, yes. But does the spreadsheet have to be exactly the way it is when we show it to them or it's just the dollar amount has to be the same? If we say the budget is going to be, uh, yeah, my figures here. And I think you have to have the line items established. Yeah. For the is warrant it, or for the presentation? Robert wants to take these out of supply sections. The warrant, there, yeah. There's no numbers, he can't function. Right. That's right. So you need it for the warrant? Yes. But by tomorrow night, we got to have numbers. That stinks. Double. Sorry. Sorry, John. This town meeting is... 21st. May 21st. May 21st. See you tomorrow night? Maybe. <laughs> Sorry. We'll have it. We'll have it. Uh, it's going to be at a higher level than we had hoped, obviously, but... Now, is there the ability to adjust it before yes. the town meeting? Uh, Once we sign the warrant, then everything would have to be an amendment from the floor. Well, maybe that's what yeah, we do as an amendment from the floor. Mm -hmm. All right. Correct me if I'm wrong, though. Um, maybe Robert can verify that we had went through this. If we adjust it, it can, cannot be higher than all the Can't go. Robert? Yes. Question from Reggie. Yes, sorry. If adjusting the budget at the warrant, um, adjusting the budget with the town meeting, we cannot make it higher, it can only be lower. Correct me we, if I'm we wrong. We cannot make it higher uh, because we've warned the inhabitants it's going to be for so much, so we can whatever it is or lower. Right. right. So the number you come up with has to be maximum. Maximum. Yeah. And that'll be 460 less than it is now, at least. All right. <laughs> Do I have any further items on the agenda? Or that tonight. That's this concludes tonight. One item is the veterans agent. Um, okay. Um, but just going back, what time would you like to meet with us tomorrow night? Ten o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Eight o'clock is fine for me. You're not here. What time are you on the agenda for? <laughs> what time will be? <laughs> no, she's done. That's it. She's All right, right. You're, on, you're on the agenda for around seven thirty, but we can always make it later than that. But does that you want, you need time before you come see us, correct? Yes. So yeah. seven thirty at the earliest, and let us know if you need later. Yeah, the, the devil's in the details, as I right. say. As they said. We have one more item to anything further for us. I, I think oh. we're good. <laughs> one comment, um, in the interest of cooperation, given our situation, um, I would be willing to uh, pass over that cruiser article with the understanding that. Later on. I would appreciate that, Chief. I'm sure Thanks. the whole community would appreciate that. As well as the uh, emergency equipment article, but I would like to address those items later on. And I certainly would like to see the training done for the high school. Yes. Can you get together with the other four towns and do that training just so thorough? No. We would. They'd be part of the situation. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, this is not a tabletop exercise. This is a physical, physical right. exercise. But I mean, they talked about that, but I mean, I think yeah, that in cooperation, there, there may be a lesser, like there may be a lesser expensive, at least a preliminary training program. Right, but no, but also, if you're going to do that, you might think about regionally involving all, all five towns. And the states, yeah. They're all coming and somebody's got to, we're going to have a plan here. Um, we, this board needs to talk about the veterans agent. Why? Well, we just hire one? We hired him. He's asked for some help. Um, Thank you. And Can I get Speaking of budget problems, oh, uh, <laughs> the problem is we need to get somebody in here to help train them. Consultant? How many hours is that? 1530. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to. Well, we never. We don't. You can be here around here, right? Yeah. So I'm sitting in the audience. Someone want to make a motion? So make a motion to hire Mr. Henning. The past Mr. Henning. Or past agents. We can't keep on the payroll until we have. We can't hire two agents at the same time. He would have to be. 
can run that by Evan uh, over at the state. Um, um, Evan is, can it Evan be a consultant? No, no. I, I'll run it by Evan first. <coughs> Evan didn't have a problem with paying all right, just, consultants. All right, Liz. so what we need is it okay? Liz. Is it all right to keep somebody on? For the, Mr. Henning or I'll someone to to similar to him, because Henning, has he said yes finally, or did he not say yes? Uh, Henning, I thought there was some problem. We need contact. Okay, but he may say yes and he may say no. Right. But someone, either him or Mr. Nasir, has said he'll come back for a couple weeks to come help train Mr. Well, you guys are the only ones I told. Him. I, think. I think. So is that okay? Sure. Yes. yes. Motion. I'll take that as a motion. No more than two weeks. No more than two weeks. It could be more than two weeks. Motion and a second. And two weeks is no more than 20 hours a week. Right. right. Motion and a second. Is there all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to adjourn. Well, anybody, anything else from the public? Open time to the public. Quickly hearing. Yes, George. Oh, thank you. I'm glad I'm not sitting over here. Thank you for your support. It's a, pri it's a privilege to sit here and, and try to do what's right. I'm a survival you want to work there. And I would like to say thank you to Ms. Roy again on opening your television. And Ms. Morgan for her election tonight. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, I, I asked her not to, so be technically. Her term starts tomorrow, but if we took any votes tonight, I didn't want to have two people sworn into the same office. Um, so I asked her to hold up on getting sworn in until after Anne really left for the final time. Um, so that we wouldn't have, if, if, most, if votes were taken tonight, there would be no question on the voting. Okay. Because she serves until, Anne serves until her replacement is sworn in. Um, but the swearing in shouldn't happen until tomorrow. Can I say one more goodbye? Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. <laughs> I want to say goodbye to you all. Say goodbye, Anne. So, <laughs> how many times did you say goodbye? Oh, this was sweet. I can take your hand. I really enjoyed working with you. Same here. Same here. With that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So, we'll have a motion to adjourn.